work, the universal human experience. We work in and around our homes to keep them clean and well kept. We work outside of our homes to earn money and provide for our financial needs. Work is often considered by many as a necessary evil, a less than desirable aspect of living life here on planet Earth. Many times our work can be fun. However, other times it seems like our work is endlessly tedious. Although work is very different for us today in the 21st century, before the Industrial Revolution, work was basically a means for pure survival. And many of the lower classes worked to provide items of luxury for the higher classes. For the lower classes that provided these accessories and items of luxury, the work was extremely tedious and incredibly tiresome. Then came technology. Technology has always sought to reduce work and increase leisure for all, lower, middle, and higher classes, everyone. With this new technology, the distance between the lower and the higher classes has shrunk with each new technological development. But that's before the tech. Let's reverse to before the technology came to be. For thousands of years, woven tapestries have been the height of wealth and luxury, spurred by their extremely difficult and time-consuming production. The loom was the tool used to form intricate patterns on rugs, bed coverings, sheets, wall directions, and more for thousands of years. However, that same tool, the loom, was also incredibly tedious in its own right to operate, and its operation required two people. A skilled weaver would sit in front of the loom, moving the weft thread in and back and forth between the layers of the warp thread, those threads that run up and down the loom. Specific threads of the warp would need to be raised and lowered in a specific sequence and to certain quantities, and only specific strings and threads were raised and lowered to form that pattern when that other thread ran through. Another position, the second position, the draw boy used to sit on top of the loom and work the warp threads, raising and lowering them according to the instructions of the skilled weaver down below in front of the loom. Although this process and the loom could and did create many, many beautiful, intricate pieces of tapestries, the process was incredibly tedious, time-consuming, and would take extraordinary amounts of time. And the system of lifting those warp threads by the draw boy was often prone to error. One error and that pattern could be permanently ruined. In addition, if that weaver wanted to produce that same design again, it was incredibly difficult to repeat that. Remember, those warp threads have to be moved and lowered in a specific order and a specific way. That made repetition incredibly difficult. Also, given the tedious nature of this production, mass production was nearly impossible on any amount of scale. That was until 1801. Joseph Marie Jacquard, a Frenchman, was born into a family of weavers. Naturally, he became one himself. Jacquard's familiarity with the process of weaving also meant that he was incredibly familiar with the drudgery of the art, and he knew that he could invent a better solution. He realized, given the repetitive nature of the loom, that the same task could be accomplished via mechanical means. The Jacquard loom was born. First demonstrated in 1801, the Jacquard loom revolutionized the world of weaving. At the time, given these woven masterpieces of art, this was a groundbreaking change. The loom worked by automatically, by mechanical means, raising and lowering those warp threads, essentially eliminating the draw boy position altogether. The Jacquard loom could create patterns without any input from an operator. It only required one weaver to work the front of the machine. The Jacquard loom made it possible for unskilled workers to manufacture complex and intricate patterns in a fraction of the time it used to take before. Additionally, the same pattern could now be reproduced 
over and over and over again, as many times as desired. Mass production was possible for the first time. The Jacquard loom that Joseph Marie had invented was a brilliant piece of engineering. It used punch cards to record and repeat the woven pattern. A master weaver would begin by designing his desired pattern on a piece of paper with squares, similar to grid paper. A skilled card maker would then take another machine in that designed by the weaver and transfer it to the cards. For every line of squares on that grid paper, that was a line on the final tapestry. Likewise, every line on the card was another line on the tapestry. Wherever a square was colored in on that original design, a hole was punched in that row on those cards. Where there was a hole, the warp thread would lift that string up. Where there was no hole, that thread would remain where it was. After these cards were punched with those rows of holes, they were threaded together to form one big long belt that could be fed into the jacquard loom. On the top of the jacquard loom was the jacquard mechanism that worked the warp threads, those threads that had to be lifted up and down. The belt was fed into the mechanism where a matrix of pins would push against the card. If one of the pins went through a hole on the card, then it would engage a hook that would lift that warp thread, thereby allowing the shuttle to carry the weft thread horizontally under and over the warp threads that were lifted or lowered, completing the weave. The mechanism essentially took the place of the draw boy and also the skilled knowledge of the weaver. Given that the weaver no longer had to sit directly in front of the machine and give instructions to a draw boy anymore, the cost of these once luxurious tapestries fell dramatically, as unskilled workers could now produce complex, intricate patterns at speeds never before possible. Multiple looms could now be managed by one master weaver that would create the designs on that squared grid paper. However, as was common throughout the Industrial Revolution, many workers opposed these mechanical devices, fearing that their jobs were going to be taken away and forever destroyed. In the 1920s, a group of textile workers actually killed some textile factory owners and smashed jacquard looms as part of the Luddite movement. However, the benefits of the new jacquard loom simply could not be destroyed, and the loom became the new standard for the textile manufacturing industry. What was once a painstaking, tedious process could now be accomplished and completed in a fraction of the time, with a fraction of the effort. Complex designs that used to only be produced once could now be repeated as many times as the weaver wanted, simply by storing and reusing those punch card belts. In fact, some rival textile factories were even known to try to steal those card belts, which is now even considered an early example of software piracy. When they stole the belts, it allowed other factories to easily produce the original designs of that other factory, maybe even their proprietary designs, without any knowledge of how the weave worked. The Jacquard loom has become one of the most influential pieces of early computing history. But it wasn't the loom itself that brought this legacy. It was those punched cards that were used to control the device and form the weave. Those punch cards allowed the weavers to store and repeat their patterns. And the punch cards proved to be an early binary number storage system. A hole in the card could be equivalent to a binary 1, and no hole in the card could be equivalent to a binary 0. If you're interested more on binary, rewatch my video from a few weeks ago on binary arithmetic and the development of the binary numbering system. Click the card above for more information on that. Joseph Marie Jacquard had stumbled upon a way to store data, and much more data than just textile patterns. In 1837, early computer scientist and British mathematician Charles Babbage dreamed up a device, the analytical engine, which would become the first general purpose computer ever created. He saw the Jacquard loom and realized that those punch cards would be an excellent input-output system for his computer, which used binary. Using those punch cards, Babbage dreamed up a system 
which could enter numbers in their binary form into his computer and output the results by punching new holes in blank cards. The first computer programmer, Lady Ada Lovelace, was delighted by the system, remarking, the analytical engine weaves algebraic patterns, just as the jacquard loom weaves flowers and leaves. Lady Lovelace even took the concept a step further, envisioning a future where the cards could be used to control computers, conceptualizing computer programming for the very first time. Although Babbage and Lovelace's vision took another 100 years to be fully realized, the punch card method of data storage was a stroke of genius for the computing industry. Eventually, nearly every computer that would be built used this system for its data input-output methods. Engineer Herman Hollerith eventually patented a system to read data from these punch cards. He applied his new invention to the 1890 U.S. Census. Later, IBM computers made extensive use of the punch card system. Many today may still remember those old punch card computers used through the 1970s. Although punch cards are not used as a method for computer storage anymore, the technology still exists in some practical uses today. Many standardized tests, such as the SATs, ACTs, or AP tests, use a series of dots that students fill in with a number two pencil for their correct answer. Some voters even still use ballots where they have to punch a hole through the ballot next to their choice. Modern computers can now read this data incredibly quickly in a way similar to the punch card computers used on the jacquard loom. Given these uses, it's doubtful if jacquard's 19th century system is going to fade away anytime soon. The jacquard loom is an antiquated device, but with this device came a system that revolutionized the way early computers handled data. For the first time, mechanical computation became, well, more mechanical and much less manual. Jacquard had invented a system of data storage that survived and was used for hundreds of years. The Jacquard loom is the 13th major milestone in the history of computing. The Jacquard loom is a device that's no longer used, but it's a device that has left its stamp in the world of computing history. That old system of punch cards was used for hundreds of years, allowed early computer systems to quickly interface with human commands, and even led to our modern hard drives and now flash storage devices. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. The Jacquard Loom is really one of the most exciting devices because that punch card system was used through the 1970s and even into the 80s. It changed the way computers stored and used data. It's also incredibly exciting to be able to learn how computers were programmed using paper and holes. As a reminder, I am now a brand ambassador for Saved by Christ Apparels. I'm extremely excited to make this partnership with them. They have a lot of great t-shirts, sweatshirts, and accessories. Of course, we all know that wearing a simple t-shirt isn't a substitute for carrying out the Great Commission as Christ commanded us, to go tell and disciple. However, these t-shirts, sweatshirts, and accessories can often be used as a tool, maybe just to get the conversation started. So check them out in the link down below, savedbychristapparels.com. I also have a discount code. If you use code ROADS, R-H-O-D-E-S, at checkout, you will automatically receive 15% off your order. Not only that, but I will receive 15% of your order, which will help me grow this channel, and carry out some really exciting things that I'm excited to bring to you guys. So you can share Christ and support the channel. Use code RODES at checkout at savedbychristapparels.com. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure to hit that big red button below and the bell icon that's next to it so that you will never miss another video. Consider sharing this video or your favorite video from my channel on your own social media platforms. And speaking of social media, make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, where I'm active daily. I'm also a writer on Medium, so check out this week's blog down in the description. And follow me on Medium. I've actually started my own publication over there, so I'd appreciate you guys following. And you might see some unique content on Medium that doesn't make its way to YouTube. 
So subscribe on YouTube, follow on Medium. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Be sure you tune in next Saturday for our next video on one of the first modern computers ever created. You won't want to miss it. If you guys are interested in more videos on the history of computing, click right here. If you're interested in more tech videos from my channel, click right here. Can't wait to join you guys next Saturday. See you then. Bye.